This video will present information about thousand-year lifetimes. Again, we're studying this sort of a thing because it is a part of the book of Genesis, as a part of the Bible, that perhaps to some of you will be unbelievable. You'll think it's not possible to have a thousand-year lifetimes. You may have thought that <clears throat> Adam and Eve really didn't have any uh, known existence or measurable existence or that Noah and the flood really didn't happen. And we've talked about those first two, but we're now going to talk about the thousand-year lifetimes, and I'm going to demonstrate to you that it is definitely possible to have lifetimes this long. We understand the genetic information, and in fact, it involved the rewarding of a Nobel Prize. Hopefully, you've looked at, in the past, the uh, uh, video on DNA and DNA clocks, and you saw this picture of a chromosome. Your DNA consists of 46 of these in 23 pairs, and this is a very much simplified version of a chromosome. The dark area here is a genetic area, the gene, and it, for example, might be your hair color gene. This one might be the shape of your nose gene. And these genes, that are a lot more than just these uh, four that I've shown in this picture on each individual chromosome, but they're separated by promoter regions. They're separated by a region that will basically isolate one gene from another so that they don't mix and uh, contaminate each other. <clears throat> in addition to that, at the, in that the DNA discussion, I did indicate the presence of telomeres. Telomeres were the tail ends of each one of the chromosomes. And uh, I didn't say very much about them other than to indicate we'd learn more about those in a later video. Well, this is that video. And it turns out that these telomeres are extremely important in uh, the lifetime of humans and uh, animals, as well as in the uh, well-being of those humans and animals during their lifetime. And we'll see that in a second in the next slide. But basically, these telomeres are analogous to what we see on the right here of shoelace aglets. Here is a blue shoelace coiled up here, just a standard shoelace, and it has at its end these little aglets, so-called, that are little plastic uh, cylinders that confine the ends of the shoelace to make them very usable for us when we want to lace up our shoes. So you probably have tennis shoes or some such that have laces in them, <clears throat> and when you want to lace them up, replace a, a set of shoelaces that are, are worn out, you use these aglets to point through the hole and you can very easily lace up your shoes. You also probably know that if those aglets are damaged, fall off, or disappear for one reason or another, that at that point it's kind of tough to, to lace up your shoes. The end of the shoelace frays and you have to kind of group it all together with your fingers and try to push it through and, and often that's not very successful and very uh, uh, time-consuming to do, so you usually end up just buying a new set of shoelaces. Well, the aglets perform exactly the same function as the telomeres. The aglets protect the utility of and the usefulness of the shoelace. The telomeres protect the integrity and usefulness and faithfulness of the genetic material contained in each chromosome. They were called junk DNA in earlier times, but as I said, a Nobel Prize has resulted in the discovery that these telomeres are not only not junk, but they are extremely important in uh, the well-being and lifetimes of uh, human beings and animals. And again, here is that same picture with the telomeres being the tail ends of chromosomes, and here's a little bit more detail about the discovery of their importance. Uh, it was discovered and a Nobel Prize was awarded in 2009 for medicine to the person who discovered that the uh, genes and the, the chromosomes are bounded by these protective ends called, that they gave the name telomeres. It's not junk DNA. And what they also discovered is that when the duplication process occurs, and you saw that again in the DNA uh, video where these uh, original set of DNA helix coils, uncoils, and, and <clears throat> copies are made, and you end up with two copies of the DNA. It turns out that the genetic material, the genes within each chromosome, and the promoter regions are very well copied, but uh, the 
tail ends are not so well copied, either due to the mechanics of beginning the copying process or ending the copying process. Some part of the telomeres on the original set of DNA are not faithfully copied, and that is a problem to not have those copied because if they get shorter and shorter with time, as we'll see in a minute, that leads to problems. Now, fortunately, uh, also as a result of the Nobel Prize uh, research that was done, it was discovered there's a small amount of an enzyme in each cell that was given the name telomerase. And this function of this enzyme telomerase is to promote and ma the maintenance of these telomere lengths. So the telomerase is in there and it's trying to keep, its job is to try to keep these tail ends of the chromosomes uh, as long as possible, try to prevent them from getting shorter, and if, if at all possible, try to in, increase their length at a given duplication so that there is not a problem with the copying of the true and the important gene material. Now, in effect, it's also known that that telomerase is present, but that it's present in a small amount, and that that small amount is not renewed, unfortunately. That small amount of telomerase is present in the cell. It passes on to the new cell but it's not replicated. It's not uh, increased in, in, as it is used up. In effect, then, the telomerase becomes a counter for the maximum number of good cell copies that can occur. <clears throat> the more times a cell is copied, the less uh, telomerase is present, the less maintenance that occurs on the telomeres. They get shorter, and that's not a good thing, says this research. Now, it turns out that studies with telomere lengths in people, and it's possible if you have a blood test done, it's possible to have a telomere uh, length test done to get the average length of the telomeres in your body. And it has long been found out that the longer the telomeres, for some individuals, we know some individuals that live to be 95, 100 years old, it turns out that they have long telomeres. Their long telomeres are there are maintained for some reason more than the average population and therefore their cells can reproduce accurately more often and the net result is that they live longer. They don't have the, the problems that are associated with incorrectly copying genetic material. So their cells duplicate longer and they have less diseases and therefore they live to be a longer age. The opposite has also been found that people with short telomeres have shorter lifetimes. That's because their cells malfunction sooner and they end up with many diseases, which can often be fatal and end up in a shorter lifetimes. <clears throat> we also, as I indicated in the prior slide, we know that the telomerase gene, the, the material, the enzyme material that's responsible for kind of helping to promote this telomere length is turned off. And so that is a problem. We're not making any more uh, telomerase material within our cells, our cells when they duplicate cannot accurately make a new copy of the DNA and therefore we have problems that's called in uh, medical circles that's called the aging process that we are unable to make accurate copies of our DNA and so for example some of our kidney cells are not accurately produced and we end up with some form of kidney disease or kidney malfunction or other parts of our body can do the same thing. Now rather ironically it has been discovered that cancer cells mischievously have figured out how to turn that telomerase gene on. So the cancer cells can have within them more telomerase, more enzyme able to promote at more copies of the gene and therefore some tumors and, and uh, cancer zones can grow more rapidly because they have more telomerase. That's really, really a bad situation. Now, let's get down to the story of thousand-year lifetimes in, uh, indicated for some of the early people in, uh, in the book of Genesis, Adam, Eve, Noah, and some of the others. It turns out now that if we could turn that telomerase gene on, if we could make more telomerase and have our cells duplicate more accurately more number of times, that we certainly have the potential of living a longer lifetime and maybe as long as a thousand years. 
So the idea would be that perhaps up until the time of Noah and shortly thereafter, that the telomerase making gene was turned on in living human beings and they therefore more accurately reproduced their cells. As their cells wore out, they made good copies for a lot longer time and therefore lived as long as a thousand years. So this is not proof that this happened, but this is a technical, scientific, genetic explanation for how it could have happened. In fact, there's actually, there is a book that, uh, in which the authors report on all this material about uh, telomeres and telomerase. It's called the Immortality uh, Zone or the Immortality Edge, I believe, the Immortality Edge. And the authors of that, the three co-authors of that book, have decided to take a, they, f they first discovered uh, medicine that will allow that telomerase gene to be turned on in their bodies. <clears throat> These authors expect through good diet and exercise as well as taking this first medicine for uh, uh, turning the telomerase gene on that they potentially will live a longer life. Uh, I'm not sure they're counting on a thousand years, but uh, perhaps potentially a longer life than they otherwise would live. Again, the book is called The Immortality Edge, and it uh, talks in more detail about how all of this uh, has been discovered and what the implications are for uh, lifetime and wellness. Let's just look briefly at the conclusions then. We have telomeres that are the ends of chromosomes. They're important for their overall length of life and susceptibility to disease. We want the longer telomeres as possible, and whether you are genetically born with the uh, gene uh, that enables long life, which means that your telomeres remain longer for some reason, a longer time, that is one way to have it, but we've also seen that there is a chemical or a medicine that can possibly uh, promote long telomeres. And so that telomerase is in each cell, it's promoted with, uh, its uh, job is to promote length uh, increase and, or at least not length loss of the telomere zones, and, but it's a limited amount and fortunately is not replenished. We know the gene responsible for making that telomerase and we can turn it on in humans, we now believe, and uh, we have examples of people that are trying this right now. but. From the point of genetics, or genesis, I should say, from the point of genesis, it turns out that this is a feasible, plausible explanation for how it would have been possible to live a thousand-year lifetimes at the time of Adam and Eve and Noah.